In this screencast we're going to look at creating focus areas automatically around digital events. There's a couple of ways you can do this. One is by using the Find Cycle detector and there is a screencast that shows you how to use this. But there's also a very nice tool that's built into the system. Uh, it's under the Analysis Focus Area menu and it's called Define Between Events. When you launch that, it will open up a dialog like this. First thing you can do is type in a name. I've got one already in here, test. You then need to identify the type of events that you want to use for the boundaries. So most typically it's going to be stimulus delivery events. These are the yellow light bulbs that come when we convert TTL pulses, digital triggers, coming in from a stimulus presentation system such as E-Prime or SuperLab or Presentation. But there's a whole range of different ones. You can manually put them in. You can use the, the F function keys on your keyboard. But what I've got set up here is stimulus delivery. They're in the global events bar. That's this bar that appears above where the little light, yellow light bulbs are showing up. I'm going to look for these types of events and I'm going to create a label. So I'm going to say, okay, I want to go between event type one, which corresponds to this channel here, this pink channel, which is when a startling image was presented to a participant. And then I'm going to create the focus area between that and the participant's response, just as an example. So again, we're going to select stimulus delivery, the global bar, and it will be set to um, channel, uh, sorry, stimulus eight, type eight. That's this participant response down here. And I'll show you how to identify these in a moment. I'm going to cancel out. If we come into the event palette, which is this icon on the right hand side, we can see all of the event types. So these were stimulus delivery events, 1, 8, 1, 8, 2, 4, 2, 1, 8. Typically, when the startling image was presented in this example, the participant was supposed to push the button box and respond, and that shows up as a marker type 8. So I'm going to create my focus area between these two specific events. Okay, so again, we're going to the analysis menu. Focus areas, define between events. I'm entering a, a label. This is the label that will appear in each of the focus areas. And it will number them. So it will say test one, test two, test three, so on and so forth. Stimulus delivery with a label of one. Stimulus deliver delivery with a label of eight. I'm going to turn this off. So basically we're going to select regions between marker type 1 and 8. So now we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different focus areas automatically created without having to go in and select regions or anything. I can delete these. And we'll try something a little bit different this time. Okay, so now we're back to where we were. I'm going to come back into the analysis menu. Focus areas defined between events. <clears throat> Only this time I'm going to select intervals between the participant responses. So I'm going to identify the first stimulus delivery with a label 8 and then I'm going to go to the next one and the system will create focus areas from one stimulus delivery with a label of eight to the next. Hit OK. 
we can see these are unique ones. We've basically gone from the first eight to the second eight. We've not we've instructed the system not to go from this eight to use it as a beginning boundary. We found the next eight and then the next one. Okay, so that's one one way. If I do the same thing again with the exact same criteria, but I make one subtle change, so we're going between eight and eight, and this time we're going to allow the end event, so the second eight, to be used as the beginning of the next boundary. And then we get something like this. So we've gone from the first stimulus delivery type eight to the second, then we've started again and we've gone from this one to the next one and then we've started again to the next one to the last one. So you've got a lot of flexibility there in how you create them. It doesn't have to be events um, stimulus delivery type. You can go in there and create an event. I'm going to close these out. And I'm going to add in some events. And I'm going to select the event type. I'm going to I'll put a star <clears throat> on this channel here. Another one here, another one here, and another one here. And what I want to do is create two regions between these. So this is the opening, the closing, opening and closing of the next one. And this is channel 62 and this is face reader data. And this is actually when someone was smiling happy. So I can come in to the analysis menu to focus areas using the same define between uh, events. This time I'm going to change it to notes to star and I'm going to do this on channel 62 and then I'm going to go do the same again channel 62 they don't have labels on them so I can remove these. We're just looking for a star on channel 62. And I'm going to turn the allow end event to be used as the next start. So I hit OK. And what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Let's try that again. Oh, here we go. So it was looking for a star in the global. My mistake. Change this to channel 62. So now we're both set. We're looking for stars on channel 2, star on channel 62 rather, without labels. We'll try that again. Okay, perfect. So now we've created these two boundaries. Okay, test focus 1, test focus 2. Now you may have noticed when you come into here, you can also define between appended segments. And in my case, I only have one segment in here, so it's created one master um, segment. But if you've broken your recording up into different segments by using the append um, mode, then for each segment, the system will create focus areas for you. And then there's the list of focus areas. And if I want to get rid of one, I can select it. And there we go. We're back to where we were. Okay, so that gives you an overview of the focus area tool 
that allows you to automatically create these regions so that when you do your analysis you can just focus on the parts of the data that are really important. Okay, so that concludes this webinar.